Well, a lot of the help through all the turmoil that Baltimore has seen, a lot of that help came from the faith community. Dr. I'm sorry, Reverend Vaughn, Reverend Gilly, you're joining us this morning. Your voices have been heard loud and clear to the community who needed to hear your voice. Just talk to me about um, your message for Baltimore right now as things move, move forward. My message to Baltimore from, from a clergy pastor perspective, we need to move on to healing. We need to, uh, as the faith-based community or the faith community comes together more, to enhance and to encourage uh, outreach in our churches to do better what we've always done as a presence in the community. Um, even now we're preparing to do a training on the 4th of May at the Trinity Baptist Church, mm -hmm. the Baptist Ministers Conference is sponsoring that on a listening, how to have a listening campaign. That's where the church, whatever, wherever your community is, the church goes out and invite the community in to just listen to the cries and the pains that are within their very own community. And f from that, we're going to come together in a collaborative uh, sense to work out some agendas and some goals to help long range in, in the communities that the churches are providing in. Because each community is unique and has its own different needs. And I think uh, it's time we really put our thing on the pulse beat of the community and not presume or assume that we have the answers. Because sure. we don't. Yeah, Reverend Vaughn, a pastor came up to me last week and he says, man, I'm scared that I failed our young people leading up to today. I'm, I'm scared that I didn't prepare them for this moment. How, how do you react to, to that kind of comment? My reaction to that kind of problem is it may very well be right. And I think not only as a pastor, what I said, I think the city itself, mm -hmm. I think the nation itself has failed our young people. I passed in Sandtown, Winchester, went to school in Sandtown, Winchester, was once janitor of the church that I passed yeah. there. I'm in my 58th year now pastoring, but I know the heartbeats of those people. And I think what this whole thing does is call us to our knees but we got to get off our knees and really do some action. If the city, the state, and the federal government let these young people down now, I'm afraid all hell will break out because they have said to us, you won't hear us. We have needs. And I think they have showed to us, too, that through social media, they can very well gather faster than some of us can. <laughs> And I don't think, uh, you know, this will be just bandy. I think an indictment is a thing that excites them. But what happens after an indictment? What happens? Will the city, will the state, will the nation really reach out uh, to meet their needs? Fine to bring us lunches now, but most of them got plenty of food in their freezers. Yeah. They don't need lunches. They need the conditions that exist that I believe purely are evil. They need them to move them. I've been around a long time. I was here in the riots during the 60s. I marched in all the marches. But these youngsters are not even concerned about that. They are concerned about what is Baltimore going to do now? What is Maryland going to do now? What is the nation going to do now to really hear our cries and to make us feel that we do have some hope, that we do have a future? Right now, they don't feel that they have hope. They don't feel like they have a future. And I think. And you have to excuse me for saying it, hmm. but I think we are damn responsible for it. One image that stands out to me, seeing pastors locked arm in arm, walking down North, uh, North Avenue. Just quickly, just describe for you and from your standpoint, what was that like? Well, to be in it, among it, uh, for me, it was, it was another form of serving, okay. visibility. But we have to also lock arms and arms, not just in the middle of the streets, for just this particular camera moment. We need to now lock arms and arms across this city and state mm -hmm. as ministers and pastors and come together and work together as servants and not as uh, celebrities sure. and do some real work. I think what happened Friday, I want to compliment uh, State's Attorney Mosby. I think what she did was very courageous. I, I don't think we would have gotten that from another State's Attorney, especially our former one. I believe that uh, this is the beginning to the right way for seeking justice. Okay. But I also says, also notice that uh, some other things, there needs to be checks and balance in our leadership in the city. I think it's time for the voters to rid themselves of this cancer of incompetence and in leadership.
stop voting for name recognition and vote based on people's integrity sure. and their and their their and their ability to perform and not cater to a certain area in the city, a certain class in the city. The second thing that I was uh, Hold on, I'm, I'm going to get you to save it because they're telling me we've got to get going. But okay. stay where you are. I appreciate you guys stepping, sure. standing by.